It's very hard to dominate a sport like F1, but over the years, technological advancements has helped teams in doing so. We all know about Lewis Hamilton's Mercedes running riot, year after year after year, but that's not the only instance. Today we'll be taking a look at the times when F1 drivers were a class apart and absolutely destroyed their compatriots. Number 11, 1950, Monaco Grand Prix. The second ever race in Formula One history produced one of the most iconic results of all time, which is still discussed. It was Juan Manuel Fangio, the Argentina legend's first win at the level and he won in Monaco after racing for over 100 laps. Even though the starting grid featured alternating rows of three cars and two cars, no one had any idea about any other cars during the race. The racer in the Alfa Romeo was super fast and clinched the win for more than a lap ahead of second placed Alberto Ascari. In fact, he was two laps ahead of the driver finishing third, and that shows the quality of his driving on the night rather than the vehicles involved. Fangio would go on to have a very dominant career and one of the most dominant seasons in the F1 in 1955 but his performance in 1950 was easily his best. Number 10, 1954, Italian Grand Prix. Juan Manuel Fangio was one of a kind, truly a legend, and definitely one of the greatest racers of all time. In 1954, which we mentioned as one of the most dominant seasons in F1, Fangio had wrapped up the title before the penultimate round of the championship, winning his second world title. Fangio was in pole position and had just sneaked ahead of Alberto Ascari, but it was a very close fought race between the two legends, and Carl Kling, along with Sterling Moss, also led briefly, but Fangio took the lead on lap 68 and ended up winning by more than one lap from Mike Hawthorne. Not normal. Trust us, not normal. Number 9, 1952 French Grand Prix. This is one of the iconic races of the earliest era of Formula 1, a very symbolic race that was raced in a time duration of three hours rather than a set number of laps. Ferrari's Alberta Ascari finished the race in the number one position and led all 77 laps throughout the 182 minutes. In fact, and even lapped his third place teammate Piero Taruffi and it was Ascari second win of the season. All in all, it was such a good and dominant victory that the opponents probably suffered from the mental damage, and he won the next one in dominant fashion as well. Number 8, 1952 British Grand Prix. So remember Alberto Ascari, the dude who was on a different level during the French Grand Prix? Well, remember how we said he won the next race too? That one makes the list too. The Ferrari man was once again on a completely different level from everyone else. The demon actually lapped his own teammate twice in a row. This is not normal. Home favorite Mike Hawthorne did manage to finish third and gave fans a lot to cheer about, but he was a lap by Ascari twice in the same race. He'd go on to win the next three races and was crowned the driver world champion, as expected. Number 7, 1962, French Grand Prix. The 1962 French Grand Prix took place in Rowan, and the battle was between Graham and Phil Hill and Bruce McLaren. They were the front runners, and it was supposed to be between them only. But we had a surprise winner that day, Dan Gurney. He left everyone behind in such a dominant fashion that people couldn't believe what happened. The American was on fire, probably literally because fans who saw him race that day couldn't even imagine what was happening and how he left everyone behind with such ease. It was an effortless drive from Gurney, and he would go on to finish a lap ahead of Tony Maggs in his Copper Climax, and it was quite comfortably the most dominant race of his entire career. Again, that isn't a surprise because the American only got four wins throughout his career. Number 6, 2013, Singapore Grand Prix. This was Sebastian Vettel at the peak of his career. In fact, more precisely, it was the peak of his four-year dominance of Formula One, and he really came into his own on this day. Nico Rosberg would try to tussle with Vettel for a while, but once the Red Bull pulled away, there was no catching him whatsoever. Its true advantage became apparent after the safety car was deployed sometime during the middle of the race, and Vettel managed to maintain a gap of more than three seconds within a single lap of the restart. This was immediately extended to 22 seconds after just 10 laps, and it was probably the most dominant race of Vettel's career. Imagine a dominance where Giancarlo Minardi starts speculating that Vettel's RB9 was actually benefiting from technology akin to traction control. Hilarious, right? It was wasn't at that time. Of course, the rumors amounted to nothing, and it was just an example of how good Vettel was during his peak. Number 5, 1995 Australian Grand Prix. Michael Shoemaker and David Coulthard featured in this race, and it was a great event. It will go down in history as the last race held in Adelaide, with Michael retiring after the first round of pit stops. Coulthard led for a while before ended up crashing while coming out from the first pit stop. Even Ferrari's Gerard Berger had to retire as a front runner, and Rubens Barrichello also retiring. Jean Alessi had terrible luck, too, as he also had to finish the car much earlier, and that meant Hill was unchallenged at the top. He was so, so dominant that he would lap runner-up Olivier Panis for a second time on the way to his 13th Formula 1 victory. He carried this momentum into the 1996 season and claimed his only driver's championship in a super season. Number 4, 2017 Mexican Grand Prix. Max Verstappen is enjoying one of the most dominant seasons in the F1 in 2022, but it was in 2017 that Verstappen truly dominated from start to finish in Mexico City. There was a bit of a struggle in the beginning, but he managed to edge ahead the competition, and then it was 
fairly straightforward from that point onward. Even though Hamilton would go on to win the championship for the fourth time, Verstappen's domination was a big sign of things to come. He even described the race as the easiest of his career up until that point. And while we think that might have changed after some of the races in 2021 and 2022, it was still an incredible performance by Max. Number 3. 1996 Spanish Grand Prix Michael Shoemaker's win in Spain in 1996 doesn't need an introduction because it was by far the best race we've ever seen. In terms of the conditions and context, nothing will ever come close because of Shoemaker's sheer dominance on a track and day on which only six ended up finishing. He looked like he was racing on a different track to everyone else and ended up obliterating everyone and produced lap times that were just unreal. To say the least, he won by 45 seconds in crazy conditions, lashing rain, and what no. But Shoemaker just didn't have time for anyone that day. Number 2. Michael Shoemaker, 2002 Well, this isn't just one Grand Prix, but how can you possibly make a list without adding this madness from Shoemaker in 2002? It's unfair on every other race if you had even one, so you either add all 11 or you just round it up as the greatest season of all time. Your call. In 17 races, Shoemaker didn't finish off the podium even once and ended up winning 11 races on his way to a third championship. In fact, he finished the season with almost double the points of his teammate and the nearest championship competitor, Rubens Barrichello. The 144 points that Shoemaker got were a record for most points in the season, and he broke his own record from the seasons before. Some would argue that in 2013, Vettel had a better season, and Hamilton's dominance has been absurd, but 2002 Shoemaker edges ahead for us. Number 1. 1969 Spanish Grand Prix The most dominant race win of all time in 1969 in Spain, when Mattress Ford's Jackal Stewart would produce an insane performance to win by a huge margin. A margin of victory that hasn't been matched since, and probably never will be. The winner, Stewart, would go on to take the checker flag two whole laps ahead of the runner-up. He was actually fourth at one point, but he edged ahead after Chris Ammon's engine seized at the start of the 56th lap, and Jackie didn't look back. Not even once. He'd go on to claim his seventh career win, and it became his first ever win in Spain, and easily the most dominant win of F1 history. That's a wrap for this video. Which of these races was the most dominant for you? Or did we miss another race that was more dominant and should have been on the list? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.